So I'm, I'm, I'm Lucy, I'll be leading to this chapter. It's on security and the learning objectives for this chapter is we learn how to prevent some of the undesired um, outputs caused by malicious attackers and uh, misleading of outputs allowed by some functions, combinations. So these are the sections that we look at. Uh, we look at um, the security within your app. So particularly the data, the kind of data that is um, uh, embedded within the app. And then we have the computer resources and publishing on shiny apps on the website shinyapps.io and some final conclusions about the chapter. Okay, um, so in general, anyone who deploys the app is responsible for the security between the apps and within your app. However, it's possible for a knowledgeable attacker to send values that are not expected. <clears throat> so the advice about how to secure uh, your device um, by attackers is not exhaustive. Therefore, we need to search for alternative solutions to the impossibility of stopping an attacker from invalid, invading sorry, your app and its contents. Therefore, it's not to underestimate combinations or substitutions of functions that would be preventable, that would be preventable errors in a cre chain creation. So how do we uh, put security in our app? Uh, we have got two main security actions, so we have the validation and the solution. So shiny app, uh, shiny inputs, sorry, use client client side validation, such as data that is user specific, and they need uh, and need the user to authenticate before use. And secondly, is shiny server code isolation, where one user cannot see the data from another user in a different session. The only exception is, is if in caching is in use. Um, we we'll learn more in the last chapter. Um, so data, we know we have got a sensitive kind of data, could be credit data or um, health data. And uh, passwords, these are the most targeted objectives of the attackers. And for this reason, it is recommended to firstly, do not store the password in the source code of your app, but eventually in a variable in the environment or use IML file to store login credentials. Or thirdly is use git ignore to include the appropriate files containing your authentication credentials. Okay. Um, so about authentication and client-side validation, there's more than one alternative to authenticate. The first thing is you need some kind of a layer between the user interface and the shiny server. And uh, this is referred to as an proxy. So we have got a very good illustration here of um, Alice asks Bob what time is, and we have got this proxy that informs Bob what the time is. So what is the current time that is uh, that is sent from the proxy to Bob? And uh, Bob uh, answers that the time is 7 p.m. And proxy um, picks the response and transfer that to Alice and informs them that it's 7 p.m. So with that illustration, we see that it will redirect the user to, to an authentication page, as in login page. And once authenticated, it will check whether the user is author authorized and then lets them access the Shiny app application. Um, so this was a very interesting part of the slide where we have a list of five packages for configuration, authentication, and storage of login credentials. And from this, we'll see that there's several options to choose from to choose from uh, based, of, based on your needs and the desire, design of your app. So the first package is config, and this is used to manage the environment specific configuration values. And how we install the config, fun, uh, config package is 
using the install.packages function as usual, including it, we use the library function. So how does this package store the password in a file? So the package makes it easier to deploy the content, and in this context, is used to keep the credentials outside of the R script by saving them in a config.yml file while keeping it in the current directory. Okay, um, so what is a YAML file? So these are type of files made for making easy international collaborations with a language which is both human readable and computational powerful. So this is an below here is an example of how a config.yaml file looks like. So we have got the username and the password. And um, we can recall this information back to its directory using this function. In the config uh, package, there's a function called get. Then you specify where the file is. And you can call the username and the password using the following commands. Another package, um, there is another package is auth0. I'm not so sure how to pronounce that. <laughs> yeah, uh, so it is an identity provider and it offers a server, a server where to store shiny apps as well as procedures for setting credentials at access. For this, you need an account where to load your app and set up the credentials. So a file that is created is out um, .yml file, which you can create using this function, the user, the use um, underscore out, yeah, <laughs> which can be automatically positioned in the app directory, and it is already, it is already al already filled with the basic information. And below here, we see an example of how uh, this particular file looks like. Okay, uh, so the next step is then we set up the keys and we can do this using the edits, um, fun the edits are environment function um, from the use this fun package. And this will add an r.environment file in your package directory and for you to modify the contents. In doing this, it adds a layer between Shiny and the user. And then you can retrieve in the credential using the system.get end function, as shown also in this example here. Um, so this is not an exclusive um, of the package. However, it is recommended to store, to use for storing credential inside environment variables, even with other variables, even with other packages. Another um, example of a package is the Shiny Manager. <clears throat> and this is for simple and secure authentication mechanism. So we can look at a live demonstration. I assume once you have the you have created the account. I think that's why you can put the username and the password. Well, that is how it would look like. We look at, <clears throat> sorry, the shinyapps.io uh, in the last section, close to the last section. So uh, the shiny server allow, allows authentication using these credentials. So the user, shiny and the password shiny. Oh, and you can use a shiny manager and the password shiny manager. <clears throat> oh, excuse me. In particular, it provides a function secure app in which uh, to wrap the UI. So we can wrap the UI with a secure, uh, using the secure app function. 
We can also do the same in the server and you can use the function server secure. Uh, and uh, to check credentials, you can use the function check credentials. And there's also another uh, package called shiny auth, sir. okay. And uh, so these are the functions which you can use to secure an app. And these functions are the invisibly called from JavaScript with this command, the shiny GS package. That particular package also provides a method for cookie-based automatic login. This means that the system can store the credential for some time as established by the creator of the app. And lastly, we have the Sodium package, which is a software a library for en encryption, a description, uh, decryption, sorry, signatures, and password hashing, and other others. Um, uses. So generally, this package is used in the context of encrypt passwords with simple commands. <clears throat> Sorry. Yes, we have got simple commands such as user um, name and password. And this will release the password in this format. So we have the password is what you had in quotes. And uh, so the password is, yes, the password that you had in quotes. And you can store the password which you had created here. And you, you can store the password using the password underscore store. And it will generate this kind of a file. <clears throat> we have once you have stored it, you can verify that particular password using the password underscore verify, and it's a logical um, function so to result a true or false. And if it's true, it will result to be true. And lastly, there was another book that was suggested by the author um, called Cabarose. I have no idea if that's how you're meant to pronounce it. <laughs> So this is a computer network authentication protocol, which is developed by MIT, and it is classified as auxiliary military equipment by the authorities for its capacities of data encryption standards. And um, the development of this product uh, followed with the versions updates and the implementation by the other uh, institutions, included uh, the Royal Institute of technology and in Sweden and so many. So you can have a look on this link and learn more. In general, what happens in an app when setting up the login credentials is described uh, below. So in the UI, you can use uh, the following commands uh, for wrapping your code and build a module. While in the server, you should not mind to storage any form of credentials that are saved, uh, store them in the files with the following um, formats. So either IML or an XLM, RDS, or in the environment and so on. The server should include the function event reactive to check whether the user's credential and passwords are valid credential, raising a silent validation error. So the syntax is as shown on this R chunk. Then let's see an example. Um, in this example, it's shown for simplicity of the shiny um, author R package and the credentials lo are located in the server and they should be in a config.ml file as we've seen. And then they can be retrieved for use. So you may find yourself being prompted by such um, pop-up and say, please log in and then I uh, put the credentials. So how do we do this? We have, of course, we, we run the Shiny, we upload, sorry, we load the Shiny package 
and uh, so we create a data frame that holds the username, the passwords, and other user data. So here we have um, the columns user, um, the passwords, uh, the permissions, and the name. So the permissions is either admin or just standard. And uh, in the UI, so we add a logout button UI, so using the div function. Um, so with the argument pull rights, the HTML tab functions in Shiny, like the div or uh, the P function returns the object. Then let's use the Shiny auth R package. So we say the logout UI. So the ID is we log out and then we add a login panel in the UI function as well. And lastly, we set up a table output to show the user info after logging in. So that's an example in the UI. And for the server, we now call the login module supplying the data frame. And um, then the user and the password columns and it will react uh, and a reactive trigger. So here we use the function login server. We have got the ID as login as previously we had an ID as login as well. And for the data, uh, it's the user base, which we had created. Uh, yes, which we had created above. And we have the user column, it's the user column and the password column is the password column. And then it is, we have the logouts with the reactive add logouts. So using this function. And lastly, we call the logout module with the reactive trigger to hide and show, hide or show. So we have the logout server with an ID logout and active, a reactive, uh, so reactive, sorry, and then the credentials. And then we are calling um, the user author. And the output is a user table where we have rendered a table. And here we'll use the function rec to only render results when the credential so this function is true. So only after that is true, um, the run will be a, a successful login. And lastly, when accessing an API, API sorry, or a database in R, our Shiny inputs use client-side validation and often requires to provide credentials such as login name and password. So that was example one. Um, any question? No question, okay. Okay, and another example of shiny inputs using now the client side validation. So here, uh, what this means is the inputs performed by a JavaScript in the browser were possible for an attacker to send unexpected values. So here we create a list. Let's, as the example, we create a list called secrets. So the list has got four elements, the my name, uh, birthday, a social security number and credit cards. And we want only to allow uh, a, out of this information that has been uh, collected, we want to allow only the name and the birthday. And uh, so in the UI, we select, um, we select, so we select the choices and the choices here, we have got either A and B. And so the text output that we want is to give us the secrets upon selection by user. So the above, an attacker can open up a JavaScript console in their browser, and then they can run this function, the shiny um, dot set input value to see client data that are not allowed to see. So how can we prevent this? We can add a layer of security in the server, and this is added using the rec function. And what this function does, it ensures that the values are available 
And if any of the given values is not truthfully, and, and then the operation is stopped by raising a silent exception. So if you wish to learn more about the function, um, this is the syntax. So in the server function, we put that to, to allow only the values to be selected to be actually part of that, we use the rec function input that these values chosen should be in the allowed as well. So only values in X and in allowed can be chosen because it's the truthful one. Okay. Um, and finally, if you from previous package, we had done a the packages up chapter. So if you had created an app, um, the author advised us to, in case you had created an app uh, that is in a package, you may wish to skip this authentication step when you're testing that app. So you can use the tests to automatically start tests, skip tests that require authentication. Yeah. Uh, yes, uh, that was a very interesting section any question any comments okay so i would like to, uh, like to ask ask because you showed a different uh, approach in which we can uh, set up our authentication for the shiny app so what i was really curious about uh, among all those steps which one is more which one is the best approach like for us to take in terms of securing our shiny app? Yes, that is a very good question. Um, I have to be honest, I've never secured an app before. So this was all pure uh, new information. And I just had a quick peep on uh, cohort one's uh, video and I think we can uh, we can ask on the Slack channel if there is anyone who can, who can advise us on the best approach to take. Yes, given that there are five and more, um, what would be like the simplest or even the best approach to take? I I I I'm I'm sure I'm not helpful, <laughs> but uh, this is the comment I can make, uh, and uh, Brendan can jump in and add more. Uh, Brendan can't jump in and add too much more, but I think it's interesting, like maybe I'll come back to this chapter much later in the future, but when I build shiny apps, it's usually for personal interests, never with any like confidential data. So this is a chapter that um, I sort of put on the side for later, um, but yeah, it was very interesting. So thank you. I agree. Yeah, I, I've been in the situations where I've, I've built up for personal use. And if I've used any kind of data, it's been public accessible data. So I haven't had a reason to secure my app, uh, but this is a very good information for future use. Um, Olu, have you ever secured an app before? No, 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 no. I've not okay. secured an app before. Okay, we can it can we can ask on on on. I will after the discussion, I will ask a question on the Slack channel and just say we have a question as Scott three. Anyone uh, who is uh, has no idea about the best and simplest or approach to take. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, and then now we move to the next section, which is on computer resources. So for computer resources is, so we have got two questions that we can ask ourselves. What about errors holds a dangerous functions? So a combination of dangerous functions, uh, selective characters, uh, such as special characters, which are not recognized by the system language. Um, what can be done to prevent the expected values from being used? So a malicious at attacker can do the following can uh, can run any code they want. They can delete important files, uh, modify data, and uh, lastly, send confidential data uh, back to the user of the app. Therefore, we are advised that we should never do the following. We should never uh, use, uh, put the source function 
um, in an uploaded R file or um, render an uploaded RMD file in a Shiny app. So this is a situation where you have created a Shiny app that uploads either an R file or an R markdown. So you should never run a, a source function or render that particular uploaded R markdown. Um, so we should also put this in mind that the combination of pass function and eval function will uh, result to as a big warning um, sign for any shiny app. So the danger is it is possible to ask R to execute arbitrary code inside a model formula. And we'll see this in the following examples. So the first examples, it shows us how, the, it shows us the combination of the pass and eval, which allows the user to insert only numeric values. So we have, this is an example of the server. So we have the results, which we want to, it we want to render a text. So when we do that is we'll use the eval and the pass and the text, so the input code. So here we are only saying that the user can insert only numeric values. So this is a combination of a code that can easily be attacked. Other possible, uh, other kinds of possibilities for error chain generators are given by the model formula. And the model formula can execute an extra command uh, when we use the print function. So we are using the print function inside uh, from the, a model formula. So here we are fitting a linear model. We have got the response variable y. And for the, um, for the covariates, we are using now the print function that we want to print high and including x. How would even this run in real life? Sorry, I, I, I did run this, but I, I tried to <laughs> I, I tried to understand how this formula is. Uh, yes. Um, I don't think it would run, did it? Yes. No, I, I, I did run it and it only printed high. That's uh, it. Yeah. So I, I, I didn't understand what else was going uh, with, especially this X and then you have got a data frame as well. Yes. So it could be there's an, in the data frame, there's a column called the X. Yeah. And then I think also with uh, in, in, uh -huh. another example is now um, warnings that come when you use the glue package. And in this book, the following is suggested that you need to pay attention to. So we have the glue, um, using the glue function, we want to input the title and it to print um, high, and a number. Okay. So, however, you are suggested to replace the glue with glue save, which will release warnings and errors. So, here we'll use the glue save to do as above, and it will result to an error in transformer, and it will say that this particular object is not found. So, the object number is not found. In so here, in case of a variable transformation, this is what can happen. So I, this was a very interesting illustration. Do you really name me some robots? And then we have, it's, it's like an SQL uh, drop table students. Oh yes, little Bobby tables we call him. Okay, so the above, it's, uh, it's an illustration of like an SQL query. Sorry. And we can use this code below with uh, the paste function, which could lead to flexibility in the code construction that would allow the addition of extra characters not warned or advised by any friendly errors. <clears throat> so we have the function find students, um, and the function has got the argument name. So we paste this. 
So we want the output to include select from as the syntax from SQL and the name that you will submit in that uh, function and it will end with this. And when you run that function, um, inputting uh, Dr. Hadley's name will have select from, so what, whatever that you had input in the first function will be in the output as shown. And uh, you can do also add, so this shows us that you can add another function, sorry, another argument, this, so Robert drop table, so the other parts of the SQL um, code. So instead of using this paste function, we are said you are advised to use the glue underscore SQL. So with that, we start, we start by connecting to a database and um, we use the database in the glue underscore SQL. And lastly, we can run the function, the find students, and this is the result, like the SQL um, syntax. Well, these were very new to me. I, have, I haven't seen some of those functions before. Um, yeah, uh, anyone who has interacted more with this can tell us. Um, so is we move to the next chapter about publishing our Shiny Apps on the website shinyapps.io. So security for your applications that do run in this website, all access the app, sorry, all access to these apps is over SSL. Um, you can configure your app to require authentication before anyone using accessing it. And in addition, every account has its subdirectory structure which serves as a double layer of security. Um, so some of the conclusions of this chapter is securing an app might require an extra uh, work around all the information available and as well as all extra available packages and functions that can be used for authenticating and avoiding the wrongfulness of combinations of functions and commands. This might be the case for apps containing sensitive information or for those letting users access restricted data. So we have a list of resources that were provided uh, from um, um, blogs or to packages themselves and also some extra packages here. Uh, whoever presented this chapter in the last cohort, I must say did a very good uh, job in adding extra information in the slides. So, yeah. I, any question, any comments? Always giving us a thumbs up. That's okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Um, I have nothing to add. I, I think it was a short chapter, and I believe also the last chapter is quite short as well. We have only five sections. So it will also be a shorter chapter as this. Um, and Bernard, thank you so much for taking lead. And also Olu, also thank you so much for taking lead in the previous chapters. You have helped me greatly, <laughs> but it was a good discussion to this teamwork. Yes. Anyway, um, I want to wish everyone a good day and we can meet next week to finish up in, uh, this book, Namaste. It's been, it's, it's been, it's been good. Yeah. <laughs> yes, sounds good. See everyone next okay, week. Okay, see you next week. Yeah. Okay, bye. Bye.